TypeScript, yes, it's the awesome language that we all love. But do you know everything about TypeScript? Let me show you some TypeScript hacks that will make you a better TypeScript developer. So the first hack is the infer keyword. So TypeScript has a keyword called infer that's actually help us a lot to build more customizable and generic types. So for instance, let's take this for example. It's mostly going to be used when you have a third party library that doesn't actually export its types and you're going to need to know the types of that library. So for instance in here, for example, we've got this fetchers where this function or method fetch a user's list where this one is basically if you just access it, it just like does the fetching in here. So it access and grabs the user's list and it returns your promise. And here it uses an interface of like a user has a username, email and picture. Now you see this interface in here, it's not exported. So it hasn't has an export or something. That means we cannot access it, we cannot import it. So we don't know exactly what is the type. So in that case, we can use the infer to actually infer the return type of the promise in here and extract it so we can use it as a type. So for instance, in here, we can do oh fetch users list. This of course is going to return a promise for us. We're not doing any await or something. So we want to know exactly what is this. Of course, VS Code already knows that because you know, you can use interlicense and everything, but I want to extract this type. You see this like a user array. We want to extract it this from like, you know, this is the actual the return type of the promise. So we simply want to extract this outside so we can have access. So for that, of course, we created a generic type. This is called type promise return type. And of course, this is basically a generic. So it takes a T and T in here can be any type. And we're telling it, oh, we're using conditional types in here, like TypeScript conditional types, where we say T extends promise. And here we use our special keyword, the infer keyword in here to basically infer the return type. So simply in here, infer this return type in here is going to be like inferred automatically by TypeScript. And it's going to tell us exactly what is the type of the return from the promise itself. So if this actually T extends an actual promise. So we're simply going to return the type in here that we just inferred using the infer keyword. Otherwise, we're just going to fall back. To and here we can simply use it with like promise return type in here. We pass it in type of users list promise. And of course, the users list promise in here is going to be like a promise that returns an user array. And after we pass it through this one, it's going to do the infer and everything. It's going to return exactly that return type in here, user array. So if you look into this one, there you go. Return type equals a user array. And we simply here can just do await users list promise in here. And it's simply going to return the same thing because now we know the type. Another good use case in here is actually to extract types of different objects. The same thing in here. Imagine you're dealing with a third party library. For example, we've got this browser history and the browser history in here is defined in like a completely third party lib TypeScript in here. So we don't have access to the actual type in here, like the browser history entry. We only have access to this array in here, which of course is like an array of browser history entries. And what we want particularly is actually to be able to infer and get this type. Of course, we can use the same thing in here. We can use the infer keyword. So we do extract object type, we pass it in the T in here. And we say, Oh, if T extends infer you, which means it like extends the actual time that we're thinking about, then we simply just going to return the type in here that we just inferred, or otherwise going to return never. And that's we can do like extract object type, we pass it in the type of the browser history, which is of course, again, the array we have in here. So this will like return the type of this, the extract object in here will extract using infer. And here the browser history will equal the browser history entry, which is the type of our browser history variable. And later on in here, we can just do const new entry equals browser history entry, and we can access the first one to get, you know, the regular type for one single entry instead of an array. And you can simply have everything we can do in here for that because the same thing we have our type inside of the library. The second hack is using the as const keyword. So the as const TypeScript keyword in here allows you to convert an array from like a regular array into like a read only array. And you can take this if you're familiar with like Python or other programming language which has tuples, it's basically like a read only tuple that has only two variables inside or like two elements. So if you imagine this example in here, we've got a simple function that calculates the distance in two dimensional space that takes the first argument in here, which is x number and y number, and it just does math absolute the difference between those to get the distance. And of course, that means it takes two arguments. So when we try to do that, let's say we've got the arguments, the first one we're not using as const, we've got the two arguments in here, you know, as we normally do we have it like an array. And when we try to call the method, we pass it in args, but we use the spread operator in here to spread the args right into this. I mean, 
it should work, right? Because this has two, so you should spread two arguments exactly as the number of argument this function actually supports and takes, and that should work fine. But now, because TypeScript, and if you look into it, it says, oh, a spread argument must either have a tuple type or to be passed to a rest parameter. So you cannot do it that way. Of course, you can do it this way, like when you have args1 and args1 in here, and that should work. But because TypeScript doesn't know exactly what is the exact type in here, and it doesn't know, it only knows that this is an array. So that means it can have two elements or more elements. So you basically can't allow you to do that. But when you tell the S cons, that means this arc array in here is now considered as a tuple. So you can pass it in correctly. And that means this particular array in here, this like args variable can no longer be changed. And now it's actually read only. So if you for example, you try to do args, and you do push, there's no push method. And if you access all the methods that are available in this one, like the into license provided for us, there's literally no push that means you cannot modify the array. Another good example in here is actually showcasing it with tabs. So let's imagine you've got like a, a web page or website that has a different tabs like dashboard, home, about, whether it's actually an array or as an object where, you know, just key value paired of objects, which is the same keys and the same values. Now imagine you've got like this function that allows you to switch a tab and it takes like a new tab. And of course, if you want to make this type safe using TypeScript, so you only want to make sure you only pass in the available tabs on the above objects in here or array about. So how can you do that? Likely we can do the same thing. So as constant is going to help us a lot. Again, as const is a saver in our case. Scenarios. For example, you can do tab equals type of tabs. And here we access with the number. So it's actually like a special sort of like way to access like the values inside of arrays. And you can basically use that all the time. So you're simply just telling it access this tabs array in here and index it with numbers and return to me all the values. So this is simply what it turns if you just look into this one equals dashboard or home or about the same thing in here for tab from objects, you do the same thing in here, like tabs from object type of but in here, because it's an object, you have got to access the key of then you do the type of this object. And this simply will just go ahead and do the same thing because it's going to convert it into an array. And here tab from object is basically going to have the same thing, all the values in like together. But for instance, if you remove as constant here, if you completely remove it from our object, and if you look back into the object, it just tells us that it's actually a string. And it doesn't exactly know the types because this is not a const and it can change at any time. But once you add as con, you're telling it, oh, this is a read only, it's never going to change. That means this will be able to infer exactly exactly what is the type of this. And now instead of keeping it this way, where every single time you add a new tab in here, for example, you add a contact and you do contact, you got to go ahead in here and do another order and add the context for this logic to work. But instead of doing that, now because we can use this time from here, we can simply just go ahead and do tab and as simple as that now tab can be equal to any of these values that are available in our array or the object. And of course, you can actually make this more of like a generic type, you can do array value type, where you do t extends only read only string, and you can access the t number in here or never. And you can use this every single time with array or an object. And this will simply just return for you exactly what you want. And the last hack is an awesome VS code TypeScript extension that's going to actually make your TypeScript errors less terrifying and easier to debug and fix. So here it's called pretty TypeScript errors and you can go in and install it from VS code completely awesome. For example, we've got this code in here and we've got a very bad error that we are having. Now simply the code is pretty simple. We got an array of our browser history and of course an array of objects, each with like a URL, a title of the web page and a timestamp when this web page was accessed on the history. And of course, we just got a bunch of objects that represent our browser navigation history, as simple as that. And let's say through this browser history, you want to actually add a new entry, let's say the user actually navigated back from google.com to a blog, and we're going to add the new entry in here. So we're going to use the third party library that's going to allow us to do that new entry. And of course, the library is pretty simple, all it does just pushes that new entry into the history. And we pass it in the array of our history and the new entry. But apparently there's an issue. So if you try to look exactly what TypeScript is telling us, you're going to actually stumble upon this really terrifying, like a lot of stuff are going on in here, block of text that makes no sense for you. And you keep reading and you don't exactly get it. Like, what does that even mean? But likely if we're using the extension that we just installed, that's going to make it a lot pretty fine. If you just scroll a little bit down, you see this like error in here, it actually points you exactly to where the error you can read the documentation if you want, or you can just read that through in here just a little bit slowly, and you will understand eventually. So here's simply is telling us that 
they got this type in here where timestamp number, a uh, title and URL. Timestamp is sometimes a number and sometimes it undefined. If you keep scrolling a little bit down in here, it's going to tell you exactly what is the type that this type in here we have where timestamp is sometimes a number and sometimes undefined it is not assignable to type browser history entry. And this is basically the type that's actually causing the issue. And if you scroll a little bit down, you tell us, oh, types of property timestamp are incompatible and type undefined is not assignable to type number. So apparently there is something wrong with the timestamp property. So let's go back into our code in here and try to look into it. So we've got this timestamp. And if we try to look into the second one, apparently we've got a timestamp that is actually missing for all the other ones in here. It's good. But this one, it has a missing timestamp, which means timestamp is going to eventually be evaluated into undefined. And that means undefined is not cannot be inside into a number. And that's exactly what TypeScript is complaining for. But now if we uncomment that coding, bring back the TypeScript or sorry, the timestamp that should work and the error is gone. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and catch you hopefully in another TypeScript hacky video.